as uh, the moon starts to rise on the east coast, so kind of that 7.45, 8 o'clock local time, depending on whether you're closer to Sydney or Melbourne, and obviously an hour earlier in Brisbane, we'll start to see it as that moon rises above the horizon. And when it's rising, it will actually already be mid-eclipse. So it's going to be one of those spectacular sights that instead of having a, a bright, yellowy full moon, it's going to be this kind of ghostly pinky, reddy, orange color. It's a very technical term. Um, moon rising above the horizon. Uh, and it will be look very different from what you would normally see. Is everyone in Australia going to have a chance to see it? I know you say it starts in the east, we'll all get a chance. But, but you know, are there going to be places where it's going to be pretty hard? So unfortunately, Perth and the West will miss most of it. They're a little bit late to the party. Sorry, WA, it's just not working out your time. But most of the rest of the country, so Adelaide, South Australia, Northern Territory, Tasmania will all see it, at least part of it. But by the time the moon is above the horizon in the West, uh, the eclipse will mostly be over. But the Northern parts of the country will also get an even better view. They'll get a little bit longer. So Darwin, Northern Queensland, Brisbane, uh, we'll get an even better chance. So really, it's a good swath of the country that will be able to see it. OK, maybe it's the WA hard border. Oh, just <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the eclipse I is not even allowed. Up. OK. Is it a partial eclipse? But, but just explain what the, that means for how much of the moon will be able to see. So by being a partial eclipse, 97% is in the shadow. So, you know, like if this was your mark at school, you would still call it perfect. So it's it's pretty good. So just a tiny fraction of the moon won't be in that shadow or in that peak. But because most of it is, we'll still have nearly all of the moon dark and you won't really notice that. And as that moon goes in the shadow, we'll get most of that color across the surface of the moon. And again, the color is going to vary depending on your location. It really depends on what the atmosphere is doing. So your view in Melbourne may be different than your view in Sydney or Brisbane. And that's kind of be the cool thing here is everyone will get a slightly different color to the moon. And will everyone around the world have the same experience in what they see? So uh, for the most part, but not all of the world will get to see it. So the, the eclipse is kind of centered in the Pacific Ocean. So New Zealand will see all of it uh, at a decent time. The U.S. and the Americas will also see it, but it's going to be in the middle of their night. So at least for us, it's only eight o'clock. Um, now, parts of Europe and Asia and Africa, they will miss out. So they won't be able to see it. So Australia is really that great place for the most part where the timing's pretty good and we get to see it. As the moon rises, will we be able to see other constellations more clearly too? So because the sky will be a little bit darker, a bright full moon really washes out things. The moon will be centered in the constellation Taurus, so the bull. It will also be near a group of stars called the Pleiades. Now, the Pleiades is also often called the Seven Sisters. Now, in Japanese, this is Subaru. So if you actually drive a Subaru, that emblem is of this group of stars, the Pleiades. Now, in Australia, lots of Aboriginal groups have noticed that the Pleiades, they call it the Seven Sisters, but when you look with your eyes, you only see six. Well, actually using that knowledge that's informed modern day astronomers to go and look out and see where is the seven star? Because we only see six. We've actually been able to notice that one of these stars in the Pleiades probably have exploded in human history. So actually using these observations of people on this continent for thousands of years to make modern day discoveries of what's going on in our skies. OK, so uh, how will you be watching it? Well, hopefully dry, since we're expecting rain in Canberra. Oh. Canberra likes to shed its tears on astronomical events, but I will be going outside and you just really need a clear view to the east. That's actually the best part. A nice clear view to the east, away from trees or buildings. Um, and you don't need any special equipment. So I'll have a telescope. Uh, that's kind of my job. Uh, I'd be a sad one if without it, but you don't need one. That's a good thing. You just need your eyes, a clear view. Binoculars will make it uh, better but hopefully the clouds are clear wherever you are. Yeah, clouds, clouds being clear is definitely helpful. And what's your time frame? Because I have this problem, which I need to sort of reveal to you, where I, I often miss my window I run, and run out yeah. and everyone's like, oh, we've done that. And so how, what's the time frame so I don't make the same mistake again? 
Yeah, so the good thing about this is it does last for quite a few minutes. It's not like, oh, you missed that two minutes and you're late to the party. So again, for most parts of the East Coast, it's starting around that 7.45 to 8 o'clock window. That's when the moon is rising. It's peaking at about 8.02. So you have about 20 minutes from when the moon is above the horizon to peak. But then it slowly gets out of the shadow and brightens for another hour and a half. So the whole thing ends at 9.47 p.m. on the East Coast adjust that time for daylight savings, whether in uh, Central Australia or further over. So you really have kind of an hour and a half to catch it. The peak, you have about a window of 30 to 40 minutes around that 802 mark. So there's a good chance that hopefully you don't miss that window within that. Okay. Time so if I set myself up at like 10 to 8, I should be good. Yeah, you'll be solid. Even right. Assuming All the right. weather I'm, works. I'm going to put my alarm on. Thank you.